And we're back. Okay, guys. So everybody who's been following me from the beginning, you're pretty much familiar with everything that I've been doing thus far. And one of the things that I did say I was going to do, and I said this so long ago, I have to apologize because I started creating so many tutorials and so many classes that I completely overlooked this. But the perspective grid, I talked about this numerous times and said, okay, you know, in the next class, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I never did it. So apologies to everybody, even the people who didn't see it yet. We're going to come here and find out that I said it and didn't do it. I apologize. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to go over the perspective grid. And to be honest, this is probably one of the most useful yet simply complicated tools ever like it's a, a big contradiction it's simple yet it's complicated upon first glance so the first thing you want to be able to do is get a familiarity with uh, perspective and I want you to familiarize yourself with the basic perspectives which are one two and three point perspectives one point perspective is basically looking at something from one specific angle where you can't see the sides or the the back of the actual object itself or underneath or on top of it you're just looking at it head on so think looking at a square a flat object that's one point two point allows you to see two sides of it so you can see the front and maybe the right side or the front and the left side and then three point allows you to see three points which is front uh, left and maybe top or you know back right and the bottom whatever the case may be and that all depends on your viewing angle like worm's eye view or bird's eye view okay so you have to take all of these things into consideration in order for you to understand how this tool operates so let's get started first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our tools panel and we're gonna look for the perspective grid tool now this tool looks like a grid almost like uh, a side of a rectangle several rectangles and there's actually a flat plane on the left now the thing with that is you have two options underneath that actual tool itself so you have the perspective grid tool and perspective selection tool we're just gonna go over the grid tool for now um, but essentially the selection tool allows you to select the points and adjust them uh, uh, proportionately within one another in the grid uh, but the perspective grid tool once you click that you'll get a grid on your screen okay um, and you can select the top point of this grid and you can raise it or you can lower it um, to make the grid bigger and right now we're looking at a two-point perspective grid okay and we have this flat line in the background is actually a horizon line anybody who knows what the horizon line is they know that's your vanishing point. So it's the point where all points of your object meet against the horizon. It's the smallest of points that come outward to the points of the top and the bottom of your actual figure. Okay, so we see that this is one horizon line point, which gives you two points. This is how you know it's a two-point perspective. And you can see that these come from this point. This is the point that they meet on this horizon line. So that's point one. And the other side meets at this point. That's point two, two points. Okay. Now you may want to manipulate this. Let's say you wanted one point or three point perspective. You would go to your view menu. You would go down to perspective grid and you would go to define grid. And when you click that, you'll notice that it brings up your define perspective grid options box. Now in this box, you have perspective grid settings and the types that you can select are one, two and three so let's select one point and click OK now you'll notice we have one point on the horizon that represents our horizon line and the actual vantage point of our figure so if we were to let's say we were to take a rectangle matter of fact let's get that out of here let's let's select a rectangle tool and we were to click that and we were to drag it over you can see that this would be the face of our object and these would actually be the points at which each point meet against the horizon line. All right, has to be that one point where they all meet against the horizon line. So that's where your object would be. Okay. Now let's 
get rid of that. Let's go back into our define grid options and then select two point. We click OK and now we have our two point perspective. Now we already went over the one point, we went over the two point, and you see that there are two points on the horizon line. Let's see what the three point option looks like. So view, perspective grid, define grid, let's go down to three point perspective, and let's just click OK. All right, now, right now, you'll notice we have three points. There is the point where these two meet, and then there is the point here where these sides meet, and then the point here. So you have a three-point perspective. And as you can see, this is a bird's eye view. We're looking at a top-down view because it's getting smaller. If we were to reverse that, it would be a worm's eye view, which means we will be looking from the bottom upward. And we're going to leave it as it is for now. Now, here's the interesting thing. And I'm actually just going to move the artboard down just so that the white space is here and we can see it. Actually, I'm going to expand it so that we can see it on all sides. Uh, let's bring it back just a little bit. I don't like that edge being too visible. And let's bring this over here. And we will bring this down here. Okay, so this is our three-point perspective. Now, you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, one thing I want to tell you, sometimes you may want to get rid of this perspective grid. You have to get rid of it by clicking the X in this little box in the upper left corner. Uh, that's how it will take it off your screen. Now, one thing you need to be wary of is there are three sides that are showing on this box, okay? But only one of them is highlighted with a color. That means that that side is the side that is going to be representative of where you're laying your solid shapes. If you were to use a shape, a regular shape, any of these shapes, you'll notice that when you use it, depending upon which side is selected, it will start building your shape in that actual perspective. This is the best feature this thing could actually be used for, is especially when you're creating buildings or anything geometric that has perspective and you can use shapes. This is the ultimate helper, okay? Now, what if you want it on one of these sides? Well, that's when you start to change the face of your actual cube in the corner and when you do that it allows you to set the object according to what plane it's on. So we started first with this plane and then we moved over to the other plane and then to this plane which as you can see as we select they show that they're each on different planes and this is excellent. You can't get any better than that. So if you wanted to, you can go back into your view and you can go to perspective grid and define grid and you can start fiddling with these options. Now you can change the consistency of the grid line and the spacing in between. Right now this is set at 30 point. Uh, you can change your unit type and the scale. You can also change the viewing angle at which you're actually viewing this. Right now we got it at a 45 degree angle. Let's change it to like 60. And then we could change the distance. Let's reduce that. And then let's change the horizon height and make it uh, negative. All right. And then we're going to click OK. Now you notice we have a worm's eye view, which almost looks like a building. We're looking from the bottom and we're looking upward. Or actually, I'm sorry, this is a bird's eye view. It's still, it's just an odd angle and it's, it's downward on the actual view itself. But you get the point. You can actually manipulate this and change it in the direction that you want it and then as you're developing and I'll get rid of these real quick we can select let's see uh, let's select the plane that we want to start with and we can start developing our work in whatever angle we see fit let's do this here you'll notice that that is like that. So you have several options. How you do it is up to you. You can fiddle with it. Um, but I definitely recommend that if you're creating like, let's say a city backdrop, or anything with buildings architecture wise or anything 
even if it's something like let's say you're inside of a living room and you want to create tables and things at a specific angle and direction this is the perfect tool to utilize all right it's going to give you your actual setup for your viewing angles and then you can start making your shapes accordingly and then you could go in and you could customize them after you're done and if you want to get rid of the grid just go up here and you click the x let me uh get out of here select this again and click the x and then it's gone and now you just are left with your pieces that you originally placed in their perspective areas. So I would say take some time, go back, check out the grid tool options, fool around with it, get familiar. If you need to realize, you know, the usage of any of these other pieces, uh, like uh, using shape tools or anything of that nature, you can always, always, always revisit my older tutorials where we explain to you how to use these specific tools and then you want to couple them together so that way you learn how to use them. Uh, I may in the future do a practical use tutorial where I build something using the actual perspective grid tool so be on the lookout for that. If you haven't recently I just introduced the how to draw HD remix tutorial where I revisited the uh, how to draw tutorial from maybe a couple of years ago this tutorial, however, is high quality. You get to see everything as I do it. I'm giving you more detail. And it's just all around better quality. So check it out when you get a chance. And check out my other tutorials. If there's anything that you're interested in, feel free to drop me a line. And I will make a tutorial for you. Uh, you can visit my website, fifthgm.com. That's five. That's the number five, actually. T as in Tom, H as in Harry, G as in Greg, M as in Mary, dot com. And you can leave me something in the contact section. Uh, you can leave me a comment if you want under the videos. And you can let me know there as well. All right. So take it easy. Thanks for joining me, you guys. And I will see you soon. Thank you.